Greetings and welcome. My name is Sister Anita Baird, and I'm a member of the Society of the Daughters of the Heart of Mary. It's my joy to be with you as we begin this holiest of weeks, starting with Palm Sunday. As we begin to journey with Jesus from the streets of Jerusalem to the hill at Golgotha, let us reflect on God's goodness, God's mercy, and God's love. Let us be still for a moment. Let us listen to our hearts. Let us listen for the voice of God as we pray. Dear Lord, speak to our hearts as we enter into the holiest of weeks. May your suffering, death, and resurrection remind us of our mortality as human beings as we place our hope in you, knowing that if we are faithful to your commands, we too, like the good thief, will one day be united with you forever in paradise. Amen. Our scripture reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter two, verses six through 11. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Today, sisters and brothers, we begin the journey from Jerusalem to Golgotha. Jesus is greeted as a king, as the Messiah, as victor, who will conquer the Romans and lead the insurrection for freedom of the Jewish people. Today, the crowd waves palm branches while shouting, Hosanna in the highest only to turn adulation into condemnation on Good Friday. When with raised fists, that same crowd shouts, crucify him, crucify him. How fickle and easily influenced are we as human beings. We are quick to embrace with adulation and follow what is popular at the moment only to become a screaming, condemning mob when public opinion turns the tide. Peter denied him, and the others fled in fear. In the end, we know that only Mary, his mother, and Mary of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene, along with the beloved apostle, remained with Jesus at the foot of the cross. In his death, Jesus is seen as a weak, defeated man, a failure in the eyes of the people. Yet it is precisely in his death that he conquers sin and death forever, reminding us that what is perceived as weakness is really divine strength. That is what Paul preaches in 2 Corinthians 12 when he says, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Paul tells us that even though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not use his divinity to lord it over us. But rather he emptied himself and took on human estate. Paul admonishes us to imitate our Lord and Savior by having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. This is possible only by adopting the attitude Jesus displayed in making himself nothing. By taking on human flesh and then humbling himself further by dying on a cross, his humility became the doorway to exaltation for Jesus and the way to fullness of life for those who believe in him. This kenosis of self-emptying passage was the early church's confession of faith and is one of the clearest biblical statements of the full deity of Jesus. Just as the Father exalted the Son for his emptying of self in total obedience to the Father's will, he will exalt us in the same way if we are willing to lay down our lives by picking up our cross and following him wherever it may lead, even unto death itself. During this past year, we have been asked to carry unbearable crosses and pain. We have carried the cross of separation of sickness, of loss of work, of home foreclosure. And most of all, we have carried the cross of the death of loved ones. We have been forced to empty ourselves of all superfluous clutter in our lives. We have been forced to empty ourselves of being in charge of our successes or failures. We have had to die to self-gratification and fulfillment. As Christians, we have chosen to either accept or embrace our weaknesses, or we have chosen to wallow in our pride, our perceived ability to determine our own destiny, only to see it all dissolve outside our control. What I have learned, however, during this past year, and especially during this Lenten journey, is that if I empty myself of all self-grandizement, if I'm willing to let go and let God, then in my weakness, I am made strong. I can face tomorrow knowing that the one who created me, who is a loving and caring parent, will lift me and give me the victory in Jesus' name. That is the good news as we enter this holy week. Yes, Jesus knew what lie ahead as he entered into Jerusalem, but he also knew that the one who had begun the good work in him would bring it to completion in his total obedience to his Father's will. That is why at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And while many may not acknowledge him, or he may not reveal himself to them in this life, I truly believe, in fact, it is my act of faith, that at the moment of death, every person will see him in all of his divinity and glory. And they will bow before him and will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Sisters and brothers, we are a people of the resurrection. The story does not end with Good Friday. That is the reason why we baptize our catechumens on Holy Saturday as a sign of our resurrected new life in Christ. I would invite you to reflect on the following. How will you bear witness to the resurrection? How will you walk with Christ in his passion and death? 
What are you being asked to let go of or to embrace on the journey? Are you willing to empty yourself to decrease in order that God might increase in your life? How will your life become your profession of faith? As we enter into this holiest of weeks, may Hosanna always be our hymn of praise because we are people of the resurrection. We are newborn creatures in Christ. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, you sent your only begotten Son, that all who believe in him will not die, but will have everlasting life. Give us the strength and grace to walk the road that leads to Calvary, to compassionately care for those we meet along the way. Give us the courage to speak truth to power, to advocate on behalf of those who are neglected and forgotten. Empty us of all selfishness and fill us with the humility and obedience of Christ so that we might share in his divinity. This is our prayer and we make it in the name of Jesus who is Lord and Savior now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. And may you have a blessed Holy Week. May you walk with Jesus, knowing that you are beloved by God. God bless.